everybody, it's K-Ball here from Zurb. Welcome to part three of our seven part Flexbox tutorial series. In today's lesson, we'll be covering the last remaining Flexbox properties that make Flexbox so amazing. We'll be covering the Flex Wrap property, how to tell your Flex parent to wrap things, rows, columns, reverse, backwards, forwards, upside down. We'll be covering the order properties, let you move things around responsibly so this thing comes first on large screens, this thing comes first on small screens, however you want. And we'll be covering the all important growth properties, flex grow, flex shrink, flex basis, and how they get combined in the flex property. It's super cool. If you're enjoying these tutorials and you want more, you wanna go more, we offer a ton more training. I wanna point you to a link right up there that's gonna take you to an upcoming training we have to offer. It covers all of the stuff in foundation. So if you really wanna up your game quickly, that's the place to go. All right, let's hop into the content for today. All right, so let's talk first about flex wrap. The flex parent can be set up to wrap in a couple different ways. So by, the, by default, what you can see on the screen is it's not wrapping at all. What I have here is a flex parent with some children and I've told those children, hey, you're supposed to be almost 50% of the width. I left a little bit off for padding because there's padding around the parent to make it pretty. You're supposed to be almost 50% of the width. But if we look at how it's laying out, they're not at all, they're actually resizing. This is one of the key elements of Flexbox is that it will resize things flexibly as needed. And we'll talk about how to control and manipulate that in a sec. But what's happening here is by default, the flex parent does not wrap, so everything's trying to fit in. If we set a flex wrap property, we can control that behavior. So the default is no wrap. Okay, we're fine with that. What happens if we change it to wrap? We do that and what you can see is all of a sudden my children resized, they're now that 46% that they were specified and they're wrapping around to take up additional room. And if we keep adding things on here, if we, for example, duplicate all four of these, let's duplicate the last two real quick. We can see they're gonna keep on wrapping. Super cool. There's more, let's go back to our default four. You can wrap, that's sort of the default behavior. Uh, you can see order wise, we're going left to right and then we wrap down left to right. That's kind of what we'd expect. But you can actually do this differently too. So you can do wrap reverse. And what'll happen is that your flex wrap is now going in completely the opposite side direction. So I'm starting in my bottom left of my parent, going to the right and then wrapping around to the top left and going right. This also interacts with your flex direction. So if you're in a column direction, let's go back to wrap default because it's easier to think about and we do flex direction column, we can actually get these things to wrap differently. Now, when I did that the naive way, nothing happened. The reason is because auto sizing from a height direction, things are just gonna keep flowing down and making this parent bigger and bigger. The way we can get them to wrap is if we start setting some heights. So if we set the parent height to say, it'd be 500 pixels and the child height then to 200 pixels, what you can see is things start wrapping along the column as well. So our children now go from top left to bottom left, to top right to bottom right. If we change to wrap reverse, what we see is the inverse of that behavior again, starting the top right, going down, top left, going down. And of course, if we were to go back to no wrap, what we would see is that now our heights are gonna get resized because we're in that direction. So if we go to flex direction, no wrap, we can see that our heights are being ignored. So this wrapping gives you all sorts of possibilities for moving things around. And you know what we'll cover in a future lesson is how we use that to create grids that can just sort of endlessly distribute their stuff as you go. Okay, let's move on to ordering. So let's get rid of our wrap properties for now. These are not necessary for ordering. And look at what we can do. So we have these children laid out, child one, two, three, four. And what, what we wanna talk about is how we can manipulate their order with the order property. I'm gonna give them some individual classes so we can target them. So we'll do child one for the first child, child two for the second, child three for the third, child four for the fourth. Now right now by default, they're laid out in DOM order. Child one is first, child two is second, child three is fourth, child four is last. But we can change that, so let's, add an order property on child one. Let's put that, say, order four. And we can see as soon as we do that, that child has shifted to the end. It's after all of these different things. We can continue down this road. Child two can be order three. And child three 
order two. And before you know it, we've completely reversed the order of our children from their DOM order. Why is this interesting? Why does this matter? Well, if you're just doing it in this way, it doesn't matter that much. But what this lets you do is put these things inside of media queries and completely reorganize your page depending on your screen size. So you might have one thing first on a small screen and want it to lay out on the far right on a larger screen. Order lets you do that trivially and makes it super simple. Let's do that real quick. So let's add a quick media query here. We'll add in media screen and min width, uh, let's say 64 M's. That's a good desktop size. We'll put these things in here. And move over. Nothing changed on the screen we're at. Things are still reversed, but if I were to go back down, you can see once I got below that 64M, my order in reversed. So this lets us get really fine getting control over how things lay out and order based on screen size. Okay, so those two things out of the way, let's get to the meat of this, which is how do you manipulate sizing? The key element of Flexbox, as we mentioned, is that it's flexible in terms of sizing. Things are not set at any particular size. So to demonstrate this, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to just two children because it'll be a lot easier to manage. So we'll take these last two children, get rid of them. And what we'll do is start looking at what we can do to do this. So right now I have an explicit width. Let's get rid of that. By default, each of these children is just taking up the space necessary. That's starting from their flex basis. Now flex basis is basically the concept of width or height, it's uh, distance along the direction of the vector. In a previous lection, uh, lesson, we talked about how uh, flex parents are really vectors. So if we're in a row parent, your flex basis is your width. And that's gonna be what width does this thing start out at? Where is its default uh, that it's gonna then shrink or grow based on the other properties we'll look at? By default, its flex basis is auto, which means it's either gonna take the width of the content that's in it, or if we have that width parameter that we set there, like 46% or what have you, it's gonna take that width and use it. We can accomplish the same thing here by doing flex basis, 46%, and we'll see they grew to exactly the same size that they did with the width. Flex basis is giving you your basis, your starting point, you've got, uh, Explicit sizes, you've got auto, which is what we just talked about, and then the other thing that is semi-common is to use 100%, which means basically start from using everything and then adjust from there. So you can see when I did flex basis 100%, what happened is not that this took 100% of the width, because we're not wrapping, it's being flexible, it's adjusting. Uh, if I were to wrap this, it, it's gonna stay there because it's no longer gonna have to change, but we're not gonna worry about that. The next parameter that we have to play with is the shrink, or we'll talk about two, the shrink and the grow parameters. So you start from your basis, you can then shrink or grow to fill up whatever space is available. And if you set shrink zero, grow zero, so if we do flex shrink zero, flex grow zero, what you can see is it forced the width to happen. We now have overflow. This thing is going all the way over here because it's unable to flexibly adjust. We've removed that possibility. If we then set instead set shrink to be one, these things are now able to shrink. They can go. Okay, zero, one, those are kind of interesting. It's like off and on, but we can do more with that. So if we take shrink and we do it differently per child, let's do, for example, the child two and give it a different shrink property. Let's give it flex shrink two. What you can see is that child two shrank twice as much as child one. They both started at their flex basis of 100%, but then child two shrank more. So you can create ratios. You can say, this thing should take up twice the space of that thing. You can do all sorts of amazing things. You can also tell things to grow at different amounts. So if instead of our flex basis of 100%, we started from a flex basis of, let's say, zero. They have flex basis zero. They have no width. Now these things are cheating a little bit because they have content inside of them and they have padding. But the 
width minus the padding should be essentially zero. Now we're gonna let them grow to take up space. So instead of flex grow, we're gonna do flex zero, we're gonna do flex grow one. We're back to our case where they're taking up equal amounts of space because they both grew to fill what was available. Same thing we had with shrink here, you do flex grow two on child two, and now child two is taking up twice the available space. So this gives you all sorts of opportunities to play with things, to set up ratios, to build ratio-based grids, to do all sorts of amazing stuff here. These are such core properties in Flexbox. These are the things that you're touching all of the time uh, that there's a shorthand for them. So we have flex basis, flex shrink, flex grow. They can all be combined into flex. Now flex, the flex property contains first the grow parameter, then the shrink parameter, then the basis. So if we have flex 110, what that's saying is start from a basis of zero and grow as much as you want. Shrink as much as you want, but do it all at a ratio of one. So that if we then apply a flex, say grow of two over to child two, it's working the same way it did when we were splitting them out. This flex property is just a shorthand. Very common cases, are to do either flex 110, which is basically take up whatever space is available to you, or flex 00 auto, which is essentially don't even think about being a flex child. Take up the amount of space you would normally take. Don't grow, don't shrink. There's also all sorts of additional fun stuff you can do with this. And when we go into the XY grid next week, we'll talk about how we built some shrink grow and auto classes using these flex properties that do basically what you'd expect. All right, so that's it for today's lesson. You've learned about flex wrap, ordering, flex shrink, flex grow, flex basis, all these things. I hope your mind by now is spinning with the possibilities of what you could build with this. Next week, we're gonna go into how we use these flex properties to create the amazing new XY grid in Foundation 6.4. You don't wanna miss it, so make sure you hit subscribe up here. And for every new subscriber, the Yeti's gonna get a new font library. You're paying for it. All right, we'll see you next week.